Hello, everyone. Welcome to Telling Tales. We are a battered and bruised and be plagued Telling Tales tonight, but we're here to bring you some more atmospheric TTRPG streams, namely our long running Simbaroom campaign. Uh, we're playing through the Throne of Thorns, which is a big, long, epic pre written thing from Free League from, for their wonderful Simbaroom role-playing game. Um, we're onto the Witch Hammer, only we're not really, because I'm running a couple of uh, smaller scenarios leading into the main bit of the Witch Hammer, just in case you tuned in and like, ooh, I love the Witch Hammer. It's my favorite thing. I can't wait, wait to see what they do with it. Well, you'll be waiting a while longer. So there we go. Uh, right, let's do the blurb before we get on with introducing people and doing recaps and all that lovely stuff. Uh, there are links below this stream, links to YouTube and links to Twitch. If you're watching on one, please do check out the other. Our Twitch is where we keep everything live, and our YouTube is where we keep everything not live. In other words, all of our previous VODs are stored on there for your viewing pleasure. Lots of different systems, lots of different games. There's something for everyone, assuming you, you know, like tabletop role-playing games. Um, there's also links to our social media, our Discord, our Patreon. Uh, all those things do what you might expect, and please do check them out if you're interested. Uh, we currently run two weekly games. Monday's is Vason with the ever-folk horror-y Johnny, uh, which uh, has been off to a roaring start. I know people are enjoying it very much. Uh, Wednesday's is, of course, Simbaroom. Um, and that's the only regular games we have at the moment, but there may be more coming soon. Uh, we also run one-shots once a month. The next one is this Saturday, uh, and it's going to be Cyborg, which is the excellent new Morkborg spin-off from Stockholm Cartel and Free League. Free League again. Vason is Free League too. I guess we're just a Free League channel. Pay us, Free League. Pay us. Um, so yeah, Cyborg this Saturday. will be streaming it from 3 o'clock in the afternoon BST. Uh, join us for that. We've got a good crew. I'll be running it. It'll be great splatterpunk, horror, sci-fi, nastiness that's only really vaguely, strongly reminiscent of our actual real lives nowadays. Um, so that's that's exciting. Uh, right, let's start bringing people on and talking about the last session, which was a couple of weeks ago now. Uh, and we're starting today, we're starting with good old John. Hey, John. Hi, Matt. Hi. Uh, John plays Sir Aaron Dar, uh, last remnant of House Dar. They're pictured with his loyal mare cat, whose name I keep forgetting. Farron. Farron. Um, so, John, what were you up to last time we joined this party of hapless sellswords? Well, as, as the scene started, we were in combat with... Um... At that point, two Templars and a squire, the final squire, having fallen down a pit and died. Um, the final count was one Templar and one squire survived. Uh, the Templar, at the point that we left him, had still not regained consciousness and was bleeding everywhere, but was probably going to survive. Um, but we can take him with us and the remaining squire was also a bit worse for wear but conscious on her feet and itching to go and stab some bad guys yeah it's worth mentioning the reason that you fought half of them to death and then the one of the survivors joined your group um is because they had been uh, branded with some kind of rune from some evil force here that's keeping a lot of a whole lot of uh undead creatures in a in a, in a big warehouse outside yes so yeah but uh you freed revelia from mm -hmm. her mind control and now she has joined to get revenge um you're at the bottom of a big tower and you decided to go up because what else do you do in a fancy game when there's a big tower and let's bring on steven uh steven plays alindra former templar novice turned uh sellsword as are you all essentially um what was in that tower, Stephen? Well, you're not going to believe this. There was like a staircase, right? And it went up. Seems far-fetched. Incredible scenes. Uh, and then there was another floor, which was uh, mainly filled with empty rooms, as I recall. We kind of swept the place for stuff, but it was um, it was almost immaculately empty. It was very kind of yes. picked clean. So um, in 
in our best uh, impression of a sort of combat formation. I think we uh, went to push on further up the stairs. There was not another, the, the next set of staircases, I recall, was on that floor, but was, was through a set of double doors, right? Yes, it was. And to uh, to talk about those double doors, um, let's uh, bring, this is, these are the recaps you get when we have combat heavy episodes where we're like, and then we went up some stairs. Thank you, Stephen. Let's move on to the, uh, the next recap. Uh, so this is Sam. Sam plays Askarai, our resident changeling scout and archer. Uh, yeah, Sam, what were those double doors about? So we had a little bit of like shuffling going on behind the doors um, and sounded zombie-ish enough for us to be very cautious about it. I think we, we decided that Askarai would take a, a stealthy, if possible, look inside and try and figure out what was going on. And inside, uh, he saw dancing kind of noble men and women, or but undead. <laughs> uh, like but whether they were noble in their in their living lives, it's un undetermined. But undead creatures dressed up in kind of noble people's clothes, kind of dancing uh, in a in a room in this tower quite a lot of them um and uh, ask i also saw a, a chandelier that they were kind of underneath that we could potentially drop on them um and then he kind of quietly closed the door and uh, went back to talk to the group about how we were going to actually deal with <laughs> this room which we had to get through to to go further up the tower Absolutely. Uh, and dealing with that room turned turned quite violent, uh, uncharacteristically for this group, obviously. <laughs> um, and let's bring on our final player tonight, Chris. Uh, Chris plays Steo, former infantryman and town guard, um, and now grumbly curmudgeon of the group. Uh, Chris, how did it all pan out? Yeah, um, we spotted the... Um, a, a very Tom and Jerry esque uh, um, chandelier suspended over the room, um, which we uh, quickly well we we worked out what you were supposed to do with that and did it, which took a, a number of of the dancers out of the proceedings for a while, and everyone just kind of got to work on the rest of them. I had been I suppose peer pressured to take weird corruption healing drugs beforehand because everyone was concerned about my well being. Um, and so Spence uh, was in great health throughout. Uh, but yeah, these these lords and ladies um, weren't built for combat. They were kind of, they, they have the, the kind of, most of them I think had those kind of bony clawy hands that were kind of doing the, the damage, but they themselves were not, uh, nowhere near as formidable as, as the four we faced in the lobby. And it was just a matter of kind of, um, everyone doing their bits to keep the crowds to, to keep the crowds basically evenly spaced and keep people away and um i think i wound up the combat with a ridiculous critical and hoisted one of them onto my spear um yeah kind of over you kind of held, holding them aloft sort of thing um uh, in a very impressive manner but that was i mean that that was literally 30 seconds for a series of events which took about two and a half hours yeah, um, yeah. but we did absolutely mince the room because that's really what we're paid for absolutely um yeah steo, steo kind of ended in his um in his hero pose there uh had had definitely had enough of the undead and i mean steo has a bit of a grudge against the undead to begin with let's face it um so there we go and that's where we ended uh, in that room. So we will open up right there again. Uh, you have ahead of you, uh, obviously, uh, stairs leading up to what will be the fourth floor of the tower that you've ascended. Um, I think, did we roll to sort of estimate how many floors the tower had and fail the roll comprehensively? Yeah. I think I tried to figure it out and we got as far as the, I think we were only on like essentially the, the second floor or first floor depending so on the which first culture floor is you the, count from yeah the first floor is the templars in that big, big entrance hall and then the second floor is empty and then the third floor is the like the lords and ladies down oh, okay so there were stairs so, that just went up and then and then yeah doors. yeah but yeah so we'd, now we figured out it was the not top yeah so now you're proceeding to like the fourth floor so yeah, yeah. 
Um, and I'm just straight up going to assume that we're doing that in a similar manner to how we've done it before. Uh, Askar is the scout taking the lead and just kind of... We do know there are mind. traps on the stairs. There yeah, are some somewhere. traps somewhere on yeah. the stairs, yeah. Uh, so. Yes, uh, Revelia could remember that there were, but her, her, the past couple of years are such a blur that she couldn't remember exactly where they were. So, yeah. so I think we had Asker I scouting for traps and then sort of Elindra being Meat Shield and then Steo and Aaron and Ganderald and Revelia. And Revelia, yeah. yeah. Um, okay then, right. Well, you know, I'm going to ask Sam, give us that uh, sweet, sweet vigilant roll, please. <laughs> okay. Uh, a flat vigilant roll. I need a 15. I rolled an 8, so I make it. Absolutely fine. You you do not spot any sign of traps on your way up on the stairs up to the fourth floor. And you find yourself on uh, in a kind of quite an open environment on the uh, on this fourth floor that seems to have a large, long corridor, a wide one as well, leading down the center of it, with a number of smaller rooms off the side. And I say smaller, but, you know, in comparison to the, the not small amount of room on this floor. But they do seem like smaller rooms than the ones you've passed before. A couple of the entrances to them are, are completely visible to where you are, just empty doorways in the same way that second floor was. Uh, and inside you see a number of them. You see what appear to be um, large old stone bed frames um, kind of that seem to have actually been kind of carved out of the, you know, the tower oh, yeah. itself. Yeah. Um, they look quite like they were quite elaborate and fancy, uh, but time has smoothed them and and, and made them kind of featureless. Um, you don't see any other furniture wreckage. You know, it's like that second floor, but this seems to. You know, you can intuit this was a. There were a lot of bed chambers on the on this floor. It seems like. Okay. From the outside of the tower, did it taper or was it kind of uh, a little bit at the top, but not not kind of excessively so? Okay. Let's go carefully and search these rooms. Yeah, well, it seems uh, well, empty. Anyone who wants to kind of search these rooms. More comprehensively, just give me a straight up vigilant roll. That's absolutely fine. I make it. Aaron Dow makes it. Steer makes it. Um, so I, I, Stephen's off screen for the moment, but I'm assuming he has also made it or not made it. Um, anyone who has made the yeah, roll can can be uh, very sure there's nothing here. It's like that second floor. It's been picked absolutely clean. When you say picked clean, does that mean there's evidence it's been kind of ra like it's been archaeology or it's been ransacked or it doesn't look ransacked because you'd expect a bit of damage, you know, people looking for secret things or, or whatever um, from your own experience, leaving places as a bit of a mess. Um, it doesn't look that way, but it definitely looks cleared. You'd expect more dust or detritus or something like that. It looks like it, the, the floor has been cleared out in some fashion. Um, you can tell from these bed chambers that they were they were quite large and grand. Uh, the beds themselves have a, a various, you know, the, the stone carved beds have various sort of sizes and levels of elaborate sort of build. Um, but all of them look quite fancy and several of them look, you know, very large, very kind of like huge rising bits of stone that are smooth and sweep up towards the wall in a kind of like very grandiose way, a kind of symbaric equivalent of a large four poster bed, you suppose. Um, but they, they obviously don't have any bed clothes or, you know, they would be uh, rather uncomfortable to sleep on now without any mattress or pillows or anything. But w once upon a time, they seem to have been rather prestigious. So this place has been looted. And I regard myself as an expert on looted uh, symbaric ruins, given I've looted a few of them. But like... Someone's cleaned, like cleared, all of the objects from here, which indicates that whatever threat is at the top of these stairs was not always there. Well, I don't know if they've been looted by like treasure hunters, because what good would 
like every item in these rooms be to treasure hunters and death people are not going to be carrying old rotten furniture up those cliff walls hmm. Some, something else is i don't know if it's whatever is in this tower or something else has taken everything that was on these floors but i can't imagine people looted it for, for well, profit surely if this tower is only occupied by well until recently five individuals then surely they would move all of their belongings to their living quarters which for five of them wouldn't be the entire tower Re uh, revalia do you do you recall your arrival to this place or is that memory too far gone no but i i remember carrying things moving Furniture, maybe. So, I mean, I do agree there's no need for all the furniture in the rest of the tower, but equally, do five people need the entire belongings of an entire tower? Something is strange. Well, I suspect that however long. Ambriagos, assuming that that's who's in the top of this tower, has been here. Like they moved in at some point and um, tidied up, and I've kept it tidy. How his name got attached to this place escapes me, but we've learned something. Our necromancer is also a bit of a interior decorator. Well, my concern is that the necromancer built the tower in the first place and has been here all this time. Potentially. Gandalf nobody... says there does seem to be a little bit of a theme developing in our investigations these past few weeks. <laughs> of people who have been in places for a long time. Yes. If all that lives here is the dead and puppets... Then nobody has need for bed clothes. Uh, at the end of the the long corridor that's framed by these bed chambers, there is another set of stairs going up. I'm not hustling you. I just realised I hadn't mentioned it. I kind of looked to, to ask Rai with with a hustle in my eye. Oh, I wasn't hustling, but he's hustling. <laughs> Blame him yeah. for the hustle, not him. Him. Yeah, that's right. Well head towards the stairs carefully okay. on the stairs absolutely uh okay could you uh on your way up ask I please roll against vigilant minus three i rolled a 12 which is exactly my vigilant minus oh <laughs> well then on your way up uh you do see that there are essentially you see a step that looks a little askew compared to the others as if it's resting on some kind of old uh, maybe some old mechanism or perhaps it's just a step that people have been avoiding for a long time and therefore <laughs> hasn't worn down in the same way as the others um, you also notice small notches on the walls on either side of, of the step that it's on I'll point this out to the rest of the group. I think we found at least a trap on the stairs. Best to avoid it. I take it we're proceeding around this. Yeah. Okay. At the top of, because this uh, these stairs kind of like double back on each other, right? Like a switch back. And near the top, near the first sort of... Um, what do you call it? Kind of landing area of the stairs where it goes back on itself. Um could I have another vigilant roll from you, please, Askarai? This time at plus five, which I think okay. it means you will definitely succeed. Yeah, that means my vigilant is 20. I rolled a 19. <laughs> but we are good. Yeah, you basically find exactly the same thing again, um, an identical sort of setup there that looks like it's a similar, a similar trap to the one you avoided previously. I'm just going to go ahead and, and assume you tell the others about it and everyone yeah. avoids it. Um, you turn that landing and start up on the other one. 
uh, on the last flight of stairs leading up to the fifth floor, which you can see from this landing looks to be one very large chamber. Like you can see uh, the roof. You can also see the roof of it kind of doming slightly, maybe indicating you are that it is the top floor. Um, and finally, Askarai, can you give me a normal vigilant test, please? Okay, so I need a 15. I rolled a three. Okay. Um, you see, uh, whereas before you saw Kassan kind of some notches on the wall, this time you see a number of suspicious looking notches on one step halfway up. Um, you think it's probably a good idea to avoid that step altogether. Okay. I will also point that out and kind of hop over that step when we get to it. And I will, I will also, I mean, I'm sure everyone can see, but say like, it looks like we're at the top, whatever we're expecting to find here is either here or not in the tower um people at the back I, I imagine steo is perhaps bringing up the rear with the two slightly more vulnerable members of the party because alindra has said she's at the front um and steo as as kind of revelia steps over that that notch step you hear her mutter kind of yeah, that that feels right and you, all of you, I imagine, arrive at the top of the stairs at roughly the same time. So, weapons see, readied. Uh, yes, I can imagine. Has uh, anyone not got their weapons ready just out of interest? Um, yeah. Uh, well, yes, weapon is ready. Um, I guess I'm going to wait and see what you describe uh, before we get into revenant striking. Yeah, and before we set stuff. it on fire. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. So, what is in front of you is a very large single chamber, a chamber crowded with a lot of very old, very battered symbaric furniture, mostly stone with some metal as well and some desiccated wood. None of it looks in very good condition at all. Um, and a lot of symbaric artifacts are scattered over them. Again, not in very good shape at all. Nothing you can immediately see is worth your time to bring back to Thistlehold. It all looks like remnants, you know, um, rather than anything of any practical value or use anymore. On one side of the wall to your right, let's say as you ascend the stairs, is what looks like a very large stone throne that has been carved from the wall of the tower in the same manner that the beds were below. Again, a long time ago, perhaps it was an elaborate. It has sort of pitted areas in it where maybe at one point jewels or gold inlay were. That has been stripped off a, a long time ago and is no longer kind of in evidence. Uh, although you can see flanking it on a couple of kind of like inlaid shelves, are uh, some what look to be maybe gold urns that maybe look like they've survived the long centuries. Perhaps your you know your keen treasure hunting eyes notice these things. Um, on the opposite side of the uh, room from you, you can see that there are large arches that face out onto the forest. You can see kind of the twisting skeletal branches of the huge trees reaching up ahead of you, some of which are flowering, as I say, in this compound. There seems to be a strange, unnatural summer-like life to them. Um, outside those arches is a balcony, and on that balcony stand three figures. Um, two of them look very much like the lords and ladies uh, standing there, almost stock still, slouched with vacant expressions on their partially rotted faces. The other one is tall, slender, muscular, and at very first glance as you come up seems to be a uh, young man of Ambria, perhaps uh, a, a junior noble of some kind, kind of dressed in quite, not a little more expensive than your clothes, Arindar, but that same kind of style of, you know, someone who wants to maybe affect more being a noble than than perhaps has achieved the, the rank and fortune to buy a lot of very expensive clothes, but that kind of style. Um, he has thin, uh, greyish strands of hair kind of tied back into a uh, kind of a ponytail that drops down his back. And he's looking out over the forest with what kind of one hand on the balcony, tapping some fingers lightly. Um, and then he turns to you all, and his face is like a waking nightmare. 
uh, most kind of a mummified mass of uh, features that look kind of almost cancerous as if they've bulged and um, kind of partially rotted and fallen apart over time, like, you know, uh, a some kind of remnant found in a bog from centuries past. Uh, he is definitely not alive. Uh, and he takes a couple of steps kind of towards the arch away from the balcony. Uh, he definitely, he has a large, very firm looking metal club strapped to his side, but he doesn't kind of reach for it uh, in any way. Uh, instead, as you kind of, as he stands there facing you, he uh, kind of just raises one hand and gives a slight gesture with one finger, and the two figures on either side to him turn round jerkily, stumble towards the edge of the balcony, and literally just topple themselves over it. And you hear a quite distant couple of thuds. Is anyone going to say anything off this immediately? I am going to howl wordlessly <laughs> and activate Revenant Strike. Because I think there's only one way this goes. He, uh, You can see kind of what's left of his eyebrows sort of raise at your, your kind of war cry. And what seems to be a, a slight smile pass across his... Uh, sort of skinless, chapped lips. Um, and then he he opens his mouth, this uh, being that's definitely been dead for centuries or millennia, and says, Welcome. In perfect Ambrian. I'm going to look at Revelia. How does Revelia look? <laughs> Uh, Revelia is backed away to the point where she's a couple of steps down the stairs. Her sword and her shield are kind of like almost hunched and she's got her head down like she doesn't want to look up. Cowering. Okay. Does anybody look like they're about to do anything other than charge this guy? <laughs> Good afternoon. Nah, not good enough. I'm going to charge. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, fair enough. This is this is combat. Oh, all right, <laughs> sure. Sorry, uh, it's 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 literally a necromancer. His face is hanging off. I've seen my family killed by people like this. We're, we're done here. Well, the Dark Lords were alive, but sure. Even worse. Yeah, Just, I mean, if, if it's what you're doing, it's what you're doing. Sure. We've we've walked up all these staircases, and it's not going to end in a cozy chat and a sort of, you know. <sighs> Don't even get me. Let me do the villain speech, though. <laughs> Um, I don't know. Can he monologue while he's fighting? Is he that? No, not it? really. Um, so, sorry. Uh, let's um, do this. Yeah. Oh, I need the. Uh, let me have a look I think at. I might have just skipped us forward a few pages. Sorry, everyone. Yeah, you did. Um, okay. Let's. Well, I'm. I'm going to say that that's uh, that bypasses that um who's who's charging forward alindra and steo is anyone immediately joining them obviously Askarai isn't he's gonna shoot this bow anyway um alindra and steo can you both roll uh vigilant at minus five please ouch that's a fail i don't pass Chris, exactly on the number pass exactly on the number there we go um, so, um, as you charge forwards, you see the figure, um, almost languorously reach up, uh, against something on the wall and his hand brushes against a thing you cannot see. And, uh, you are almost instantly surrounded by a soporific cloud of heady, heady, dusky, 
musky stuff, spores of some kind that uh, you're not even sure where they've come from. Aaron and Askarai, you see what appear to be several um, urns strung along the, the darkness of the ceiling that have just tipped down and drenched the center of the room in this sort of yellowish green concoction. Um, if you're already running, I'm going to let you do the potential dodge roll, but I'm going to penalize it further than it's already penalized, which is it's pretty pretty bad. Um, so who are not prepared must pass a roll. Okay, I'll add a couple of points to that. Can you both give me... Um, well, actually, we'll do it on the Vigilance. So, Elindra, can you give me quick minus seven quick as a roll? Minus seven. Quick and, 13. So, yeah. yeah. Steo, you can take quick minus five for noticing. I, uh, I needed an eight, and I got a nine, so that's a fail. Yeah. I need a five. I got a 20. Oh, well, now. I think I'm going to have consequences for that, my friend. Um, consequences. So first off, um, yeah, let, let's have this. Let's say that you've basically got a real lung full of this stuff, but I'll give you a chance. So, Alindra, can you give me a strong roll, please? Which, given that it's Alindra, you'll probably nail. Sure, um, uh, you've said it now, haven't you? Just a yeah, flat strong roll, yeah, said it on purpose. That's um, a pass, it's a pass. And then, Steo, can you give me a strong roll at minus 10, please? Ooh. Got a good lung full of it. Uh, if I can get less than three. <laughs> oh. um, from Aaron and Askarai's perspective, um, Il both of them stop running forwards, and Elindra just kind of like doesn't go down on one knee, but kind of staggers and kind of is like hacking and retching. Um, and unable to act for the immediate future. What this means is that you lose an action, basically. Um, Steo takes a couple of steps forwards and completely face plants onto the floor. His spear goes kind of rattling out, and he's just kind of clapped. You can see that he's breathing, but he's he looks out, completely out. Steo, the, yeah, the lights just went out for you. Just your, you know, anesthetic style. You are out. Um, and this gives me an action's worth to see if we want to do the villains. If you don't, that's cool. But at least he gets to say, please, I just want to talk. What is the reaction? We'll, we'll have, like, Aaron, Dar, and Askarai can obviously react however you want to react. And Alindra, you'll get to react in a, in a bit, but at the moment you're, you know, coughing your lungs out. It's method for you, right? Because, yeah. Yep, because that's how it be tonight. Stephen got ill for this. He went S out and licked a handrail. Yep, such dedication. Absolutely. I hope uh, you all appreciate this. <laughs> uh, Aaron and Askarai. Well, um, in an effort to delay until Linda is back on her feet, at least, I say, and then then talk, by all means. Uh, he takes um, a step forwards and says, Welcome to my family tower. I am Na Ethical Ambriagos. We should not fight. Instead, you should choose to fight for me. Join my growing army I will rise as the sovereign ruler of Simbaroom reborn you do not have to be slaves or the walking dead you can join of your own free will 
All I require is for you to bend your knee. As he's talking, he's kind of like, one hand is almost sort of smoothing and preening out the, uh, like, this sort of lower, minor, noble um, Ambrian costume he's wearing, which now he's taking a couple of steps closer, you can see has, like, a dagger hole just under the armpit. How close is he to where Alindra and Steel are? Uh, he's still up because they didn't make it that far across the floor. They maybe mm. made it maybe a third of the way, and he's only just in front of the balcony. So he he's quite a way away. Like even if Alindra regained was fully compass mentis again right now, it would still take at least kind of two or three actions to get to him. Uh, you you're on mute. I'm more worried about him getting to them while they're <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just... He's not moving forward fast. Yeah. And how long have you been here? This is my home. I have always been here. Let me just check something. Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, Elindra, you are starting to sort of regain control of your, your body a bit now. Like, the racking coughs have died down. Steo is Steo's out like a light uh, collapsed on the floor near you, which you only just register, really. Um, are you... What, how are you likely to immediately react? Are you holding your ground? Are you just pelting forwards again? So I'm sort of on the other side of this deluge of... You're you're kind of in it, really. Like it's still sort of like drifting gently around you, but like you, you're not going to get any more than what you've you've got. You know what I mean? So okay. <coughs> uh, pardon me. Um, so I'm probably going to stay where I am rather than fall back, um, and I'm going to just watch the others to see if they've got. Like other you know, plans in mind, sort of thing. Yeah, to see to see if anybody kind of gives the nod or looks like they're about to kind of twitch. And so essentially, I'm just I'm being near sure. the guy. But if he's talking, I'm not going to immediately attack him because I'm apparently yeah. on my own in this. <laughs> you he, for the he, time being, he definitely kind of has noticed you sort of rising up and has taken a couple of measured steps back away from you, and then gestures out towards Aaron Dar and says, "Come." See, from my balcony, I will show you something. You are reasonable, and then maybe your friends will listen to you. He hmm. steps to, like, one side of the balcony, so he's not, like, you know, he's not about to, like, go <laughs> and push you off or something. Like, he is well away from it, and he's kind of gesturing for you to step. He's, like, right on one side of it, kind of gesturing for you to, to step and, and look. You can skirt around the sort of soporific spores if you uh, wanted to accept his invitation. It's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> he would be, if you went around, he would be nowhere near. Of course, that doesn't mean that he doesn't have some way of killing you, but like he, he doesn't, he doesn't seem to be threatening. He hasn't drawn his club or anything. I'm trying to figure out whether Aaron would have enough guile to make his way over and then try and stab him. I mean, he'd probably be aware if you were coming straight for, like, it, it's up to you, though. Yeah. You could definitely get within charging range of him by going over, if you see what I mean, and not be immediately threatening to him. Yes, I'm. I'm going to take his invitation to move forward, and then, when I am close enough, probably make for him. Okay, are you are you going to at least are you, as you get to the balcony where he is? You have to be near the balcony to do this. Are you going to look and see what he was gesturing at? I have very poor self control, so yes, probably. Okay. 
uh, what you see is that kind of directly below you on the tower, because the tower, like that entrance hall, is like wider than the rest of the tower, right? So it had, there is like this base of this first floor that has like a roof around it. Um, that roof is evidently where those two individuals landed uh, four floors down and kind of splattered on the roof. And you can see rough smears of flesh and blood uh, from where they landed, leading over to the edge of the roof, and then off and down a ways out towards a certain building uh, where you can see them manhandling a bar out of a uh, doorway and opening it to a ravenous torrent of dragools that are pouring out and making for the tower with some speed. Uh, Nar Ethical Ambriagos says, There is no choice. I will try and stab him in the face. Okay, right. Now let's get this. Uh, let's get this underway. So, can you give us our initiative, please, John? Uh, Nar Ethikel, and I will put his um, spelling in Thank chat. Um, actually, well, let's just call him Ambriagos, right? Because that's the, the more meaningful name. Deleted it. Ah, uh, well, there we go. Uh, anyway, he is quick nine and Vigilant 11, so he's not too high. Nine um, and 11. Ooh. Uh, but he is he has prepared something, and I'm going to give him a little action before the, the whole thing begins. Um, but I'll wait for your initiative to come up before we do that. Okay. Uh, is Revelia having her own point of the initiative, or is she no, going with Gandalf? No, uh, NPCs. Let's always just dump NPCs at the end. Okay. Um, and we all well, we don't need the dragools yet, but uh, you know, um, yeah. Uh, okay. Are we good? There we are. Um, so the first thing that happens, he gets a little action before this starts where he is going to draw that fearsome-looking war club, and he is going to, with his other hand, withdraw from a small uh, pocket on the side of his tunic a uh, rather small and somewhat inconsequential-looking little handbell, uh, hmm. which he is going to ring. Uh, and... Uh, can you give me a resolute test, please, uh, Arindar? Pass. Okay. Uh, you feel the sort of uh, echoes of the... Like, when the bell rings, it seems to ring inside your skull. Uh, but you are, in, you know, your, your dander is up. Um, and you are kind of bounding along the floor, and you manage to essentially block it out long enough, uh, so you kind of come to your senses as you're kind of thrusting. Um, so you know, we you don't you, the effect it doesn't affect you in the way it could potentially affect you. Um, so that's fine. Um, Askarai, you're you're up first, friend. I'm definitely going to shoot him, but uh -huh. first, uh, I'm going to ask, how is Gandrold stood near to me? Yeah, he's stood, he stood very near you and looking quite uncertain about what he's about, or what, what he might do next. I'm going to say to Gandrold, help Steo. Uh, and then I'm going to shoot Ambriagos. Absolutely. Um, okay, well, his defense is a, is a plus one, so it's not very high, so it's Pretty bad. Um, however, um, can you roll twice and take the lowest number, please? Because okay. the bell also gives him a chance to re-roll every defense roll. Okay, but I also would like to use my hunter's instinct, <laughs> which does the opposite thing. <laughs> I'd say you just get one roll then. Let's okay. house rule it like that, right? Yeah, that makes sense to me. And um, I'm going to do what? I'll we'll see how the first shot goes, but my intention is to take two shots at him two rather shots. than that. Can you see the look on on John's face as he actually just does the the, the math on on what the actual probability stack of this is? <laughs> so you should roll three and take the middle value. 
We're best for the worst and the worst for the best. <laughs> um, absolutely. So we're doing two shots on him because he doesn't seem to be too armored, right? Yeah, that's okay. that's uh, as great as thought. Okay, so I'm one shot at a 16 is mm -hmm. what I need. I roll a 17 on my first try. Oh, there we go. And you know what? I'd say that, that this is like the effect of the bell. Like, even though you're all the way across the room, like the bell sounds like it's ringing directly in your ear. Um, and it's doing it as you're trying to line up that shot and you kind of like, oh, strain against it and loose. But the no, the arrow goes wide and just flies out kind of over the forest through the through the balcony in a way. That's right. Uh, yeah. Shakes his head, tries to clear his clear his mind, and will take uh, his second sure, second okay. shot. I rolled eleven, so if it's a hit, and the damage is a D ten plus one, which is seven total. Seven total damage, you say? Yep. Um, well, now we have to do some calculation here uh, because he takes half damage. Okay. Uh, from anything that is not a magical weapon or a holy power. Right. So, with that in mind, um, your arrow crumples against his breast. It definitely tears the clothing and is like half dangling out of it. But, uh, yeah, it does not penetrate, presumably, his kind of mummified hide. Okay. <laughs> Askrai <laughs> uh, has a very surprised and uh, unhappy look on his face seeing seeing that. Absolutely. Um, Elindra, I would say that you can charge him next turn, if that makes sense. So you can just use this turn if you if you want. I'm assuming you want to get close to him and you can get close to him enough. To, to, to attack him the following turn. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah, so I'll just cover no the distance. Um, and it's an interesting question, the magical weapons. I Here's what I'm going to say. Your base damage is halved, but your revenant strike is full. Does that make sense? If you it's like. not a magic weapon, but well, the revenant strike is magic. Except that this, this sword at some unspecified point in the past has been desecrated. It is the only sword I can do this with. Yeah, I don't know if that makes it. Let's see if you even hit him to begin yeah, with, yeah. Uh, and then we'll then we'll talk about it. You know what? Uh, yeah, okay. Let, let's let's talk about that when it happens, because there's some interesting things we could do with that, isn't there? Um, so, uh, so you're just using your turn to get closer, uh, Aaron Dar. You're you've said you're charging and attacking him, so go ahead and try to attack him then. Uh, that's okay. a, that's a plus one, and you have to roll twice and take the lowest. Okay, so that would be. Hang on, hang on. So the cause of the thing of this is he gets a second chance to roll defense. Mm -hmm. Practically, is that the same as you rolling twice and taking the lowest? Uh, not if the first roll fails. But should we just be rolling twice in a row? Unlike, I don't know. No, it is the same, isn't it? It's you're doing two rolls, yeah. and so you're, you roll and twice you... and take the highest. Oh, for your per yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But it is the same, isn't it? We, we, well, yeah, but it means if the first yeah, yeah. one is a fail, yeah. then it doesn't matter. Like the second one is always yeah. going to be a fail. Yeah. Um, the first one would be a pass, and the second one is also a pass. So okay, so you hit that is a hit. Uh, damage, please. So... With your non-magical weapon. Uh, nine. Okay, so let's halve that. Um, and I would try and calculate it, but either way, it's not getting past his mummified skin. Do um, we round it up or down? It doesn't actually matter for the for these numbers. Uh, <laughs> as, it, as in, his he, his armor is five, so it doesn't okay. matter. Uh, but it is a good, useful thing to know for later, because uh, I don't know offhand whether when you halve, you, you tend to round up or down. Um, but either way, uh, yeah, you thrust, you make it through his defense, He's not defending himself that closely. He seems to be trying to back away from you quite swiftly. And he sort of like flashes out with his war club to try and distract you, but it doesn't seem to be trying to hit you right now. Um, and your uh, fencing blade, yeah, just basically prods and bends and doesn't penetrate his his 
um, stone-like, desiccated flesh. There we go. Um, Steo ain't doing shit. Um, and now we're up to Ambriagos. Ambriagos is going to move out of engagement with you. Take a free attack. Suspicious. Uh, do I still roll twice? Yes, because he just gets yeah, he just gets um two defense rolls. I think for every defense roll. Let me double check. Uh, yeah. I rolled twice. I rolled the same result on both, and I rolled twelve damage. Ooh. So I deal one damage to him. So as he sort of peels away from you. Uh, you manage with an kind of almighty thrust to jab and get maybe the the top, you know, inch of blade into his thigh. Um, he doesn't seem to notice uh, as he moves away from you. He moves out of your engagement. He is using both actions for movement. He is kind of he's diving right into the middle of the the soporific spores uh, and is moving through them as fast as he can. Uh, I and he gets you know the chance to circle around. So I would say he's kind of moved past Elindra, although he's still chargeable from where you are, Elindra. Um, and he's kind of halfway across the floor already. He's pretty spry, uh, and he's in, he's heading directly. Well, you're not sure if he's heading directly for Askarai or directly for the stairs. Okay. So. Uh, NPCs wise, uh, maybe no surprise, Revealia is not doing anything. Um, she's sort of like hanging back. She doesn't look like she's about to flee, um, but she she looks like she has to marshal quite a bit of willpower and courage to try and engage this guy. Um, Ganderold is sort of like looking around with some confusion uh, and turns to Askara and says, what, what, what do we do? And uh, you can answer, Askara, because it's your turn. I'm going to say it's seven, seven, four. Get steel up and out of the whatever that is, if you can. Okay. Um, he, yeah, well, as he asks this, because you did say it already, he is busy, sort of like he, he's grabbed a rag or like a, a kerchief from one of his pockets and is soaking it in some kind of oil that you can smell, like some kind of herbal oil that he's soaking it in and is sort of getting it ready to wind it around his face. Because obviously, if he goes into the spores, Without some kind of protection, he might collapse as well. Understandable. So he he is busying himself with that, and you think he'll be able to go into it on the next round. Um, what are you doing, Askarai? Arrows, I suppose. I guess so. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna try and shoot him again, but seeing how hard to penetrate his skin is, or how hard to to inflict wounds on his, I'm going to try an armor-piercing shot instead of the double shot. Absolutely. Uh, and we've got... Um, are you using... You're using your hunter's thing magic on him, right? So does yeah. that... Yeah, so you just get one roll, one normal roll. One um, normal okay, roll. yeah. Defense plus one, he's got. And he has 16. I roll a 13, so it does hit. Mm -hmm. And it ignores um, his armor, but how much yeah. damage does it do? So it's a D10 plus one, six damage. Okay. Okay. Well, we don't need to. Yeah, we don't need to worry about how that halves. <laughs> um, your arrow, uh, as he's like running, basically directly <clears> for <throat> you, your arrow sort of punctures uh, his shoulder, uh, and he kind of get, glances over at it as he's sprinting forward, almost with a kind of look of shock, surprise on his uh, drooping, um, horrible nightmare of a face. Um, it's kind of very shocked that someone has managed to puncture this this hardened flesh of his. Um are you doing anything with your movement action? Um how how close am I right next to the stairs? Yeah, you're right at the top of the stairs. I don't think you mentioned moving forwards at all. So um and at the moment I can't tell if he's running past me or at me, really. Correct. I'm gonna try to move like <laughs> To the side, so that I'm not. He's not gonna like run. So if he's, me. yeah. So <laughs> if, if he's, he's like coming the for the stairs, he can just go basically go past you. Yeah, that, yeah. that's what I'm sure. Go for. Absolutely. Um, 
Ganderold is going to kind of follow you as you go as well. <laughs> um, Elindra, I'd say he is a movement away from you, so you can move and, and, and stri- engage him and strike him as he's trying to flee. <clears throat> Fantastic. So I will move, I will engage him, I guess, like mm-hmm. from behind. Yeah, so it's a... Uh, he's kind of aware of where you are, so I don't think it's a, uh, okay. a hit with advantage, but like... Um, it's certainly a, um, a free attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, well, I'm. I mean, it's oh, the, with long. With the two, you mean the two-handed yeah. finesse? Yeah, the yeah, long. yeah. So yeah, let's take that one first then. So he's defense plus one, but you have to roll twice and take the lowest. Okay, uh, so I need a sixteen. Roll twice and take the highest, presumably. One yeah, of those sorry, is a yeah, one. The other is a three. So they're both pretty good. Great. So can you roll for damage, please? Yeah, D12 plus D4. The D12 is a 7, the D4 is a 2. So that's, well, 9 if you're taking it at full, or uh, something okay. else if you're... Yeah, you know what? I... Um, uh, sorry, Jack, what? I can say I seem to remember, and I will try and check it. Is this about halving? Yes. It doesn't matter. Um, okay. So, um, yeah... Elindra, as you uh, as he kind of like wheels round uh, as you kind of come for him with your blade and sort of you see his eyes kind of glance down and a sneer crosses his face um, as he kind of raises that kind of uh, metallic war club. It looks more like it's almost like a, you know, a length of very dark metal piping almost that kind of just flanges out as it goes. It's like this sheer almost like basalt or obsidian look to it as if you know it looks like light just kind of falls into it um and he uh sort of raises it literally kind of raises it up with like like to let you strike him essentially so he can get get to you um and your sword with a flashing uh glint of purple flame slides through his body like a knife through butter and own and I'm going to say only you and he hear the distinct distant voice coming from your blade a voice like a thousand spiders burning in a bonfire that says you are mine he looks shocked for a second and then literally turns to ash that drifts down around your blade. Sort of, yeah, just stand there for a moment, really. <laughs> um, well, that's him dealt with. Well uh, done. Thanks. Revelia um, drops to her knees at the tops of the stairs and starts sobbing uncontrollably. I um, cast a quick look out the balcony. Are, are we still being? You would estimate. On? You would estimate that there are now around one hundred. Dragools in the wider enclosure and courtyard of this place milling around um, and another hundred or so pouring into the bottom of the tower. That didn't stop them. Um, it, ver- very well done, Alindra, but um, the, the horde is loose and set upon us. Is there a way out except down this staircase? Um, is that a question you're asking, or something? That's a, that's a question that I'm, that's, that's, that's Elindra asking the others. Um, well, you know what? You're on the balcony or near the balcony, Aaron. Could you give me a your choice of a vigilant or cunning role, please? Cunning, please. Just very slightly higher. Target of seven. Roll sixteen. Um. No, uh, like, yeah, there's there is no other exit other than the stairs that you can see I from uh, uh, the balcony, obviously. Um, yeah, 
I seem to recall the uh, the the ropes that we used to get down are still in place on the cliffside, right? They are indeed. Um, uh, Ganderold is sort of uh, have you? Uh, Ganderold is sort of looking around with some kind of consternation, um, and uh, s- sort of has one arm around Revelia and says, uh, "Askarai, can, can, can you?" Uh, Astro will go over to to help, I guess, comfort Revelia is is what he's saying. Or yeah, he he's kind of slowly bringing her to her feet. Um, she what, seems quite Steer? overwhelmed by this. Uh, Steer was lying on the floor asleep. In which is Steer out of the spores? Uh, the spores have all like settled on the okay. floor now. So I, yeah, you can definitely go over to him. I will move over to like help Revelia, and I will say to Gander, please, please help Steer. We need him. We need him awake. Sure. Um, Ganderold sort of scampers over to Steo, sort of leans over and looks at his face, kind of rolls back kind of one eye to look underneath and goes, <sighs> and kind of slaps his face hard, which is already resting on the floor. Um, Steo, the world comes back in quite a blinding flash of sudden stinging pain on your face. Frios is it's a gay bloody necromancer. Just, pr- I might actually try and punch Ganderald before I realize what's going on. Yeah, sure. I mean, I think you've got very low chance of it because of the way you're kind of slumped on the floor. But let's uh, let's go for it. I'm up for it. Um, so his defense, <laughs> um, but I will add to his defense as well for sure. Oh, his defense is minus four. That's tasty. Uh, let's call it a minus seven. So give me a, an accurate roll at minus seven, please. Seven or less? Fifteen. Oh. Yeah, no. He kind of Oh, it's okay, it's okay. Steo, it's it you're fine, you're safe. Where's the where's the, I kind of run and kind of quite quickly come to and, and and rescue my spear from the couple of feet away it's probably clattered and it's 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 fine. Elintra cut him down. Cut, cut him down easily. I think safe might be an exaggeration though. We do have an imminent problem. The barn is open. They're coming. Oh, oh and the Templar's down there. He's dead now. Oh. Uh, Ganderald <laughs> has joined you on the balcony, Aaron. Um, is Has anyone else checking out the bat? I know I'm just basically coming up with a reason for it not to have to be Ganderald to reach some kind of conclusion. Um, but would anyone else, we think, investigate the balcony for a way out? I will have a look around. Sure. Your choice of vigilant or cunning? Uh, it's the same role either way, and I pass it. Uh, the tower is absolutely swathed with these oddly um, resilient to winter vines. They look very sturdy. These vines look climbable. I'll give it a attempt. And there's still like a like a load of these zombie creatures at the bottom of the tower. There are, but the vines would take you. Do you remember I mentioned the bottom floor has that wide roof that the two that toppled over landed on? You would be on there, which the the you know these creatures would struggle to climb up on. Okay. It's definitely set. You can hear them coming up the stairs. That Not roof. this immediate one. There are floors below you. But they're not slow. They're not like, mm. you know, we're not talking Romero zombies here. We're not talking 28 days zombies either, but are comfortable in the middle, you know. <laughs> that that roof down there is closer to our escape route than here. Okay. So we're climbing. Just on, uh, just while uh, this decision's going on, I want to quickly understand this pile of furniture. And mm-hmm. could I use it to bung up the the kind of stairwell? Absolutely no chance. Like it's all like either very heavy to move or no problem at all to smash through. And the actual like stairwell is probably around I don't know, like fifteen feet across and like incredibly high. Um, like a good twenty feet high. Like it it would not be no. No is the answer to the question. 
And the next thing I want to try and do is grab those gold urns that caught my eye. Sure, you can absolutely do that. Let me just get a, a full sort of... Um... Yeah, you, uh, you, you scamper over to where the throne is, and there are two urns, uh, two kind of gold-looking urns uh, that are very carryable, and there's also directly behind the throne a stone coffin um, that seems to be filled with loose coin, loose Ambrian coin. Um, I mean, there's no way to carry it, particularly. Uh, if you wanted to fashion some way of trying to carry some of that loose coin, absolutely go for it. But, you know, it ticks along that clock a bit, not to get too blades yeah. in the dark about it. I assume we have like, I, packs and stuff, but like you do, but like scoot. Yeah, it's it going to take, take some time. time. It's definitely and we're to talking... grab the urns, which are like that big. Mm -hmm. It's definitely like yoink, and then make off with it. Mm -hmm. but... And we're talking loose coin here. We're not talking like a big chest of thaler. We're talking like uh, among other things, or eggs and shillings and, and junk. Like it's yeah, it's and, not guaranteed. And, and certainly thaler. There is a lot of coin in there. Yeah, do you know what? There's uh, risk reward. I'm going to take the urns and I'm going to haul ass to the um, balcony and I'm going to shout to ask right, grab his bell. Uh, as, speaking of potentially cursed loot, where's, is his club also somewhere on his the floor? There is a pile of ash in the center of the room. In it uh, is a number of. Um, there's a, Now, I think he's also was wearing some jewelry. Um. And basically, the, the clothes are still... The ragged Ambrian clothes are still there, but they're obviously no good. Um, there is ash, and there is a small bell. There is a, a that um, metallic club. And there is also... Let me get this... Uh, there's definitely a thing here I saw for his jewellery. Um, yes, he's wearing various bits of expensive-looking Ambrian jewellery. You can see a couple of gold rings... You can see uh, a kind of a pendant with a large sort of amberish. I mean, maybe amber, or it may be, you know, topaz or some other kind of um, precious stone on it. They look nice. I'm going to attempt to grab all of it as I'm kind of helping. How much help does Revelia need? Revelia is definitely time? kind of coming to more now. You you feel like it was just kind of like you know this being who has um, yeah. <laughs> owned her for the last two years and it's it's all it's all a bit much yeah i'm i'm helping her across the room and as we pass by the the ash slash corpse i'm gonna grab all the all the stuff that i can take if that's everything you could you can grab it all it's like the bell is like that big the club is like you know it's just a single hand weapon yeah. and the jewelry is just like you know a, a, you you can grab it all and then run. Absolutely, I will grab all, stick it in my in my pack or in my cloak somewhere, and keep heading with Revelia towards sure. towards the balcony. So it sounds to me that the first people to climb are probably Arindar and Alindra because they're people who aren't grabbing things. So let's look at the mechanics for this. More climbing. I'm sure Chris is very happy about that. So. Um, the, we have two tests that you have to pe make per turn for scaling on the way down. The first is Vigilant plus three. So let's have that, please, from both of you. Okay. That's a pass. That's a pass. That's good. So I would also then like a discrete roll from both of Oof. you, please. Just flat discrete. Flat discrete. That is a fail. That's also a fail. That's fine. We no longer need to make discrete rolls, folks. Um, it was a bit of a tall order for you to all make them in every one I'm going to ask for. But now we know, so it's, it's fine. There's a bit um, of me that's tempted to, to spend XP on it, but it sounds like we're all going to have to do that going down. Yeah, so. I think you'd. Uh, it would be a very tall order for, a, for one not to be failed on the way down. Um, so Steel and Askarai, can I then have your roles, please, of Vigilant plus three? <laughs> I rolled a 20. <laughs> oh, no, Askarai. I think uh, 
I could XP it. I'm so I needed like an 18. I will say this <laughs> on the first turn of doing this, <laughs> it would be good not to fail it. Okay, I'll I'll, I'll XP it. It's uh, <laughs> there we go. Seems no nope, that one valid. down, please, Chris. Chris I rolled another master. 20. Oh my god, <laughs> well then. Oh no, I thought I'd well been rolling then. too well the past session and a bit. Can anyone remember falling damage? Oh my god, I'm gonna literally um, die. I, I remember <laughs> that you had to house rule it last time. I, because... I remember falling damage being like my last three sessions, so yeah. Um, um... I'll find this uh, damage from falling, <laughs> damage equal to the number of meters fallen. Mm -hmm. Successful quick roll allows the character to land better. Or even break the fall, effectively reducing the damage. Subtract three meters from the fall. Okay. Um, so, uh, Askarai, can you give us that quick roll, please? Armor protects as usual. Okay. Uh, my quick is my quick is ten. Uh, I already failed. I rolled a thirteen. Are you going to XP that one? I've only got a fifty percent chance. <laughs> like that's not even a. I guess sure. I sure. Well, how much? You. What does this do for me if I pass? Your, this? So it's a, a a point of toughness per meter, right? You're dropping fifteen meters. Fifteen. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the, you get your armor rolls. Passing the quick roll does re remove removes three meters. Yeah, so yeah. it'd be twelve damage in total. How much toughness have you got? Not that, like ten. I'm at max. I, I, I would re-roll if I was you, but it's it's up to you. 15. That's that's all right. I'm gonna re-roll. Can't spend <laughs> like, XP when that, you're that, dead, man. That could easily make the difference. Okay, I'm gonna re-roll. I need a 10. I rolled a 17, so I still fail. There we go. Can you give me an armor roll, please, Askarai? This is which you two... can also spend XP to re-roll, you know. This is two D4, so this could be good enough. I rolled a three total, which leaves me uh, very much unconscious slash how, dead. How much? Is, yeah, <laughs> how much is your toughness? It's it's twelve, my right? You said no. My toughness is ten. I have minimum toughness, basically. So, <laughs> As Askarai falls and it's death saving throw time. I can't believe we're about to lose a player character to a freaking <laughs> ledge. <laughs> I mean, I guess I'll re-roll. Seems sensible for another. Can can I re-roll well, armor? You, you, you can, but like, how much did you get there? Three in total, did you say? Yeah, I'm rolling two d four, and I'd need six on two d four, which is not easy to not be. Yeah, zero toughness. I think it's worth it to not have to face, potentially not have to face the death rolls. Yep, they're probably fat. <laughs> okay, I'll try again. I rolled an eight. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Oh. Three XP later. <laughs> uh, um, and there we go. Um, basically, Askarai, you, you let like the others climb out ahead of you and then perhaps overly confident kind of grab the same vine they grabbed, the sturdy one, but they grabbed that one and have climbed down it and the weight has pulled it away from the wall. And every, you just see Askarai tumbling down past you. The, um, the is it called the Hag, Hagramore? Hagamore cloak? Yeah, yeah I think Hag The Lindworm cloak yeah. sort of like flashing in that kind of greenish mother of pearl as it just drops through the air next to you. And Askarai crashes onto the roof of the, the tower below with quite a sickening thump. Um, you can see the below. He is like, oh, uh, like sort of clambering to his knees. So he's not down and out. But what does that leave you with? Two toughness? Uh, I rolled. How much would I take? 15? 15. And I rolled eight. So eight. I take seven. I guess seven. I'm on three. Yeah, I sure. It does go over my pain, but it goes over my pain pressure. I don't know if that does anything or not. It does. I, I'm going to say you can't act like next turn. So, okay. yeah. Okay, and on to the next turn, uh, where if everyone see, I'm being I'm being nice to you. the The rules for this say it's a vigilant plus three every turn for five turns. 
I'm going to say you get better at it because why would you not as you're you're like clambering down? So I'm going to say the next roll is a, for the three of you is a vigilant plus four, and I'm going to assume the NPCs are fine because yeah, too many rolls. Vigilant plus, plus four, please. Does my acrobatics factor in that to this at all? By the way, ooh, that's a good question. I mean, what does do, do your acrobatics typically apply to climbing rolls? What they, do, what it do doesn't they do? say they do, but when we climbed down the rope, you gave me something for it. Do you remember what I gave you for it? I'll uh, give you a you plus two. Yeah, Take, no, you, uh, just him, you just let him go down, if I recall. You, I think it said in the book that he doesn't have to roll if he's got acrobatics. Yeah, that, but that was a specific uh, but that was because a specific the situation thing. said. But you know what? No, I think you should have a bonus at least. I don't think this is a different scenario, okay. um, but it's similar. So you know what? Have a, have a plus two to it, so you can have vigilant okay. plus six. Okay. Target of 11. Oh, my God. No, I'm going to spend an XP and try that again. Pass. Okay, there we go. We are down again. Um, Sam, you spend this turn basically like clambering to your feet and groaning loudly. Like the world's just flashed past you and your back really fucking hurts. Um, and your sides, you like a couple of scales from your cloak are like sliding down the the slight sort of incline of the roof as you you clamber to your feet, um, and you also hear some scrabbling coming from an edge of the roof, not next to you, but not too far away from you either. Can I do stuff yet, or am I hearing this while I'm getting? No, this is and... you getting to your feet. Yeah, that's okay. what's happening this turn. So. Um, right, third roll. So this is like the midway point. Um, so from the three of you, I would like a, a vigilant plus five roll, please. That's a pass. Boo! Arendar? Well, that it's is... vigilant plus seven for you because of the. Yeah, acrobatics. that is just a fail. I needed a 12 and I got 13. Okay, are we spending X? Are we burning XP for rerolls? I think we've climbed down far enough. I'm I'm happy to. You're try willing and to take the fall. Of, okay. Yeah. Um, well, the fall is going to cost you nine toughness. Okay. So both of you feel free to roll your armor against that. I'm going to roll my quick first. Your quick first, because that's Did the you... test for the uh, to take three off it. Yeah. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, quick first to take three off it. Yeah. Which is a pass, so that would only be nine. That's, and then I roll six. my armor. It's six, John. What? Nine is the full amount, so it would be six. Yes, sorry. Um, yes. And then D8, four, five. So I take one toughness. Okay. Uh, Steel, how are we doing? I take seven toughness, um, which is my pain threshold, but is not beyond okay. it. Um, did you? Uh, so, did you do the quick roll to see if you reduced it? Oh no, I didn't actually. Yeah, yeah. Do, like, do the quick roll. Kind of garbage. Quickity quick, quick, quick. Ten. Oh, that's not too bad actually. Oh, it is not bad if I fail no. it. That's a fail um, as well. Steo lands next to you with a very loud clatter, Askarai, um, and you you can hear him groaning and swearing. I'm sure he'll give us an illustration of that. Bam! Bam! Great. Um, Aaron also lands nearby you, uh, kind of on his feet, uh, but is sort of limping slightly as he, as he comes back to it. So I think that was, did you say, seven toughness that Steo takes, which is not a huge, horrible amount for him. And Aaron, oh, it, it's more than half. half. Okay. Yeah, but still, it's not like it's not like what Askarai's taken. Yeah. Um, and did you say you took one, Aaron? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, and yeah, Steo. Uh, oh no, it's not uh, not at your pain threshold, so or not over your so, pain threshold. So you'll get to act immediately next. I time. am going to act uh, immediately and try and t t see no, if I can. No, you won't. Your action oh. was to try and climb down and then fall. Okay, okay, okay. So, um, but you won't be. You won't have to not do anything next turn in the same way the Asker I did last turn. How are Gandrod and Revelia doing? They're doing fine. As I said, I'm, I am not rolling yeah. for micro stuff for NPCs on this thing. They are fine. Ganderold is very sensible uh, and Revelia is young and spry. So um, they are doing just fine climbing near Alindra. Um, and at the edge of the roof, 
climb, clamber over four dragools. Uh, they are cl cl kind of, they are on the roof, but not yet clambered to their feet. So next turn they will clamber to their feet, and the turn after that they'll be able to run and attack you, um, unless you have already done such a thing. Um, so we are now on to, well, no, Askarai. Do you want to take like they haven't clambered up at this point? I've been, I'm so confusing with this. Um, Askarai, what did you want to do on this turn? Um. Go over to where I hear the clambering noises, and with my sword, with my fencing sword, if the, if anything is coming up, try to stab at one of them. Yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Let me bring up uh, Dragul stats because they are just uh, in the basic book. And what I'll rule for this is if you hit something while it's climbing, it no matter how much damage you do, it will topple off. Because I think that's that's kind of fair enough. Especially with these kind of things, um, their normal defense is zero. But I would say that climbing is very difficult to defend yourself. So I would say you get a plus three on this. So just an, an attack at plus three, please. Okay. That's your discreet. You'll roll against for this, right? Yeah, it's discreet. I get advantage because of faint. Okay. So it's like my discreet plus two plus three, which I think is eighteen mm -hmm. plus one for my sword. I rolled nice. an 18, so I, I didn't make it. Nice. The, dam yeah. the damage, I haven't hit with this sword in a while. I think the damage is a D8 plus 1 plus a D4 for the advantage of discrete. Okay. So a D8 and a D4 plus 1. That's I rolled a 3 plus 1 for damage. Yeah, sure. And that's Stephen has said in private chat, yeah, let's throw up some initiative for this, I think. Uh, we are kind of in combat now. Um, the Dragool, Dragools, John, are 10 for quick and 11 for vigilant. Um, and it's Dragool without a H, so D R A G O U L. Um, so, uh, yeah, one of the Dragools basically kind of topples off from climbing, uh, with a hissing noise and crunches into a pile of them who are kind of clambering, sort of World War Z style, up against. Uh, the wall as a, a big mass of them is trying to get up to where you are. Uh, you can see others climbing below them, so you're going to have considerable company in a few turns if you don't do something about it or run. Okay. Um, but as it is, let's go to the next turn. Uh, so and it's Askarai first. Hey. Um, so the Dragools now, there are three Dragools basically prone on the ground around you. They're not engaged because they're prone. Um, look, at, can you give me a um, maybe a either a cunning or a vigilant role, please, Ask Ryan. I'm just asking you because you're the most compass mentus on this roof at, the, at this point. Is that the second time today I've used the term compass mentus? I think it is. I think so. You wait um, a whole campaign for one compass <laughs> mentus. I'm going to go with vigilant since that's my better stat. I need a 15, I roll a 6, so I make it. Okay. There's two ways off this roof, or two directions you could feasibly go to get out of this compound from kind of looking around where you are, because you're kind of at the edge of the tower, so you can kind of see around past it. There's the courtyard ahead of you that leads to the gates that lead out of this compound. There are, right now, about 100 Dragools roaming around that. Some of them are kind of see, have seen you and are sort of snapping at the air and swinging their arms, but aren't kind of coming for you just yet. And some of them are just wandering. The other way, with far less dragools, as you kind of like whip your head round, you can see that the compound walls directly behind the tower have a chunk out of them and are far more easily scalable, more climbing, than any other part of the wall. There are some dragools clambering up further along that way, but there's like two of them at the moment clambering onto the roof down there rather than a hundred the other way. But it would also mean you've got to get over that section of the wall, which is a climb, but you know, yeah. Yeah, it's a climb, but it's not a hundred dragools. Correct. Um, okay, I'm, I'm probably going to 
the other people have just like landed on the roof. Is that yeah, right? Basically, yeah. I'm I'm gonna have this information. Wait till everyone's on the roof, and then you know, mention maybe we should go that way. To, to sure, everybody. but for now you're not you're not moving significantly. Is that right? No, for now I'm gonna keep trying to kill or get the juggles I have in front of me off the roof. As okay. I mean, you could strike them, or I'm perfectly happy for you to just try and pu like push these prone juggles off off the roof. Um, so it, it's up to you. There are also, you would say, next turn, behind them will arrive just one dragool. So it's up to you what you want to do. You could try and strike at the one climbing, or you could try and heave one of the ones that's sort of like clambering its way up off. I don't fancy my chances in a in a pushing. <laughs> I, sure. I, I'm going to strike one that's climbing. But sure. That's my. That's my uh, well, that's going to be the same again. So it's your. I think you needed like an an eighteen or lower, right? So yeah. And I rolled a twenty. <laughs> I don't know what that does for me on a on a hit against a climbing dragool, but it's it's not. I think one of the dragools on the floor can take a swipe at you. Okay, yeah, that's fair. Um, but I'll say that their hit is is very much less than you know is like uh, less capable. So can you give me a defense roll, please? Uh, at just a flat defense roll. Give me a flat defense roll. Okay, my defense is fifteen. I rolled 15, so that makes it. Yep. Okay. Um, so as you kind of lean over these ones that are kind of prone on the floor um, to swipe at the other one, climbing up behind them, uh, one of them is like wielding a rusty sword in their hand and sort of swipes it, skittering along the roof of this uh, this bottom floor of the tower at your feet, and you just kind of manage to literally like, you know, jump and, <laughs> and, and dodge it as it slices through where your uh, hamstrings would have been rather painfully uh, a moment beforehand. Maybe at this point, I'll take my move to like move back in the other direction and be like, sure. guys, we should really go this way. <laughs> really uh... go this way. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's, that's, that's fine. Um, so, uh, Elindra, we have another climbing role, please, unless yeah. you just want to drop. <clears throat> I'm, no thanks. I think I'm, I'm two turns off climbing down. Yes, yeah, so that's. I think we're are we at vigilant plus six. If you like, I think yeah, that's a pass. Yep, you are nearly down now. You're only three meters away from where the others are. Um, okay. Aaron Dar. I think I will probably go in the direction that Askeray has indicated. Um. Uh, despite the fact that I just fell off, I still think I'm the most competent climber. So I want to see if it's actually climbable and maybe start picking out the best route. You're the most compass climber. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Do you, are you taking like a full double move and sort of with a full double move, you can kind of skirt around the edge of the tower and move towards like the rear of this, this roof that you're on? sort of ahead of where Askarai is. Uh, it's where two Dragools are kind of pulling themselves to their feet, but there don't seem to be any others clambering up behind them, but they are there. So you probably have to try and fight your way through them or yes. or, or run past them and take free attacks from them, I guess. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to like approach them with weapons drawn. Yeah. You, you can engage one of them if you want at this point. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Yeah, you can dash up to one of these um, dragools that are there and, and, and try and attack them. Uh, the defense is just straight up zero. Okay. Target of 16. That is a hit, but only for four. Hit for four. Um, they are wearing sort of ragged studded leather. Um, and your slice cuts through it and shears off a, a small festering bit of uh flesh that flops to the uh to the rooftop so you do you do strike but you don't seem to do too much damage uh okay uh it's dr it's dragool time so uh the dragools the three dragools that were prone are going to clamber up to their feet that's what they do 
Uh, the one Dragool that was climbing is now on the roof. So there are now four Dragools on the roof. And you can see behind climbing them is another two. And the two Dragools by Aaron, uh, w- the one you're engaged with is going to fight you. And the other one is going to engage you. So, and and try and hit you. So can I have two defense rolls, please, at a minus five? Minus five? Minus five. Oh, oh dear. Strong okay. 15. It's actually super rare in this game for an enemy to not attack you with with a strong, with an attack of 15 because there are so many abilities that swap accurate for something else and what the the developers have done is just given everything the appropriate thing for whatever their highest stat is. Okay. Um, so it feels a bit weird sometimes, but yeah. I have a target of 9, which is a fail. And a f- fail. I'm not happy about my hit points, so I'm going to burn another experience to re-roll, let's say, the last one of those. Sure. Pass. Okay. So let's deal with the hit first, shall we? And then okay. we'll get on to your, your defense and riposte. Um, so give me an armor roll, please. No. Armor roll of six. Oh, cool. Um... One of their one of them is wielding a rusty axe. Oh. Seven. Okay. Uh, one of them is wielding a rusty axe, uh, which kind of swishes past you very close as you uh, take a, uh, a sort of step back um, and manages to not hit you. Uh, do you want to do your repost on the other one? Oh, that's a miss. Which that's is a, a shame because I rolled 12 on the damage. Yeah, that's a bad miss. So, uh, yeah. Mostly an impasse there in that conflict. Uh, Steo. Oh, we need to get off the roof. So way and off the Aaron roof is, is the way, yeah, the way Aaron is with these two two, two other Dragools. Okay, I'm going to go over and um, um, in, enter into combat range with one of them, proccing my free attack and therefore allowing me to use my Mastership to, I don't know, yeet them out of combat. Hopefully. Sure. Um, I'm not sure you can engage both of them in what... I think. You no, 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 just one of them. Sorry, Just apologies. one of them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you want to take the one that's been slightly damaged by Aaron or the other one? I'll take the other one because if I can remove him from combat then... Look, there's a ledge behind, maybe. If yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. And I think we did determine, right, that because it's already engaged, this is going to be a... This is an advantage attack, right? Because it's already engaged. I think we generally went through Yeah, yeah. That. No, that's that's a fair point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's an attack at... What is it? It's a plus two for advantage, right? Um, so that's going to be an attack at plus two, please. Cool. Oh, my God! It's a miss. Uh, is Is a 19 a miss for you? With plus two? 15, plus two, 60, uh, 17, plus one for the spear, your... 18. Ah, uh, annoying. Um, well, that's your free attack anyway. Yeah, you can just take a normal attack, right? Okay. Just a boring uh, normal attack. Yeah, it's still uh, have advantage. Is a, is a success. Great. Uh, so that's normal damage uh, with a plus D4 as well for the advantage. Yep, here we go. Uh, my D10 was a three, plus one for deep impact is four, and then the D4 is a two. Total of six damage. Six damage, okay. And the armor deflects some of that. Uh, but yeah, your spear kind of impacts into the creature's upper arm. You you think you, you know, you're definitely thrown by recently falling like nine meters onto the ground. So your aim is a little bit off, understandably. Uh, but you do manage to impact through the leather armor of um, the festering being and uh, deal it some decent rending damage. Um, now we're going to go for NPCs. So this is what's going to happen. Uh, Gandaralt and um, uh, Revelia are going to carry on their clambering. You know, they're down where Alindra is now. They're, they're kind of near the bottom. Um, Askarai, you're the one who's still... You're the furthest back, right? Because you've only moved one movement forwards. And yeah. I think also Elindra can see from her vantage point there is a roaring noise emer- coming from somewhere below you that honestly barely sounds human, like some 
uh, wounded animal and there is a sort of crashing noise as one of the old uh, faded glass windows in the base of this tower erupts out, kind of, you know, the glass is decayed or degraded long enough that it's just foggy and a mass of odd twisted colour, and it bursts open as a large plate-bound figure slams into the massive pile of dragouls that are clambering their way to the top of the roof, S knocks most of them sprawling, uh, steps up from one knee and starts wheeling a huge glittering longsword uh, around his head, carving two of them into in twain as he uh, bellows out a prayer to Prios and uh, waves of shimmering heat start rolling off him like the gaze of the sun god itself. Uh, it is the Wounded Templar. Wow. I was not expecting. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, background to the next turn, I think. So, Askarai. You're on mute. What side of the tower has the Templar come out of? Uh, the side I... that you're on with the with like the um, you know, the Dragouls clambering up. Uh as you, you're not sure he's not like looking up at where you are, but he seems to be um aware that someone is there because the Dragouls were clambering up to get to someone. And as they kind of they're closing in further around him and bits of them are like slowering off as the holy aura washes over them. But there are an awful lot of them down there. Um and as he sort of wheels around and clips uh sort of the sort of entire front of the face of another one off with the tip of his long sword, he bellows Flee! Make for the walls! I will hold them! Askarai is going to uh, continue on the path he was going towards the uh, the side that has less dragoons. Um, um as you're one move away, essentially, from where um, uh, Aaron and Steo are engaging the true two dragouls that are still facing you, the attention of most of the others clambering up the side um, and the ones near where you were that are kind of like scrabbling forwards, looking at the Templar down below, uh, they all seem to be distracted. It's essentially now almost a clear run to that back wall, apart from the two dragouls that the others are engaged with. Okay. Ascry is going to probably still hobbling, but we'll move as fast as he can towards these, the two that are, we're engaged with and try and hit the one fighting Aaron. I suppose that was the first one. That yeah, was with in a fight. presumably like a, an armor piercing one, right? Well, I'm just going to do it with my sword, I think. I'm not going to. Oh, okay. Yeah, fair enough. Um, all right. You can engage that one with advantage then, the one fighting Aaron. Um, so that's going to be an attack roll at plus two. Okay, that's a seven. I know oh, you're putting the, your hunter's mark on them. I think that only works on ranged attacks. Does it only work on range? That's fair. Fair enough. Um, but I do hit. I rolled a four. And so mm -hmm. it's a D8 plus a D4 plus one damage, which is seven damage. Not bad. Not bad. Um, Aaron, from your perspective, you see kind of Askarai slam into the back of this thing uh, and just kind of like almost kind of body block it and swing round and slam his blade into the side of its ribs in what would, if it was a living being, undoubtedly be a killing stroke. But for this creature, it just kind of rests itself off the end of his sword um, and sort of lurches towards you and uh, basically tries to scream in your face, but instead one half of the jaw just kind of unhinges and dangles and the wash of horrific fetid grave breath washes over you. Good stuff. Uh, Elindra, final climb roll? Uh, well, so I I'm trying to get a picture of like what things are below me. Um, At the it's... moment, nothing is below you apart from three dragouls, which are seem to be about to scramble off the edge of the roof 
to make their way towards this Templar who is becoming swarmed and overrun by a, a great mass of them, but for the moment is is holding his own. Okay, so they're, they're moving away. We'll probably continue to do so, and I'll be on my range to jump on their squishy heads. Yeah, you can't jump on them. They're kind of at the edge of the roof. Cool, then I will be sensible and climb. That's a vigilant plus seven, please. Uh, that's a fail. Ooh. I will jump. Sure. Uh, can you I'm... give me a quick roll? Sure. I say jump. We're going to call it a jump. That's yeah, a pass. Yeah, you can pretend you jumped. Then you know what? You can definitely claim it was a jump because you land on your feet and take no damage. Cool. But that's my um, move, presumably. Absolutely. And, you know, Ganderald and Revelia kind of come down beside you. Um, Having climbed, uh, but but kind of uh, alongside you now. Um, let's move to Aaron. Uh, Aaron, you are now engaged with one with Askarai, and you have advantage on it, so you get a plus two to your to your hit on it. Okay. That is a hit with eleven damage. Okay. Yep. Um, as it kind of lunged towards you with that kind of unhinged uh, jaw, you took the moment to take uh, uh, kind of take that in, took uh, a measured, you know, stance, wheeled one foot expertly behind, drove your sword for uh, your sword forward, and it pierces through the upper palate of um, this undead monstrosity out through its through its brain pan in the back of the skull and it just goes like limp heavy weights on the end of your sword almost instantly and kind of ugh, you don't need to pull your sword out because it just drops and slides off and almost kind of leaves you staggered as you uh, take a couple of steps back uh, instead um, <laughs> so that's one of your uh, you've still got a, a move left if you want to take it. You could move to the, the back edge of the roof if you want. I'm going to say that the other Dragool is now kind of engaged by Steo rather than you. You don't have to kind of get a free attack to move away from it. It's up to you. Um, I don't want to leave too many people behind me. So I sure. think I will stay. I can't like... Can I engage the Dragool without actually attacking it? Yeah, you can like, engage it. You just can't attack it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, can just I add your weight to that. Yeah, so that Steel's at an advantage right now yep. when he attacks it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and with that, it's the Dragools. So, uh, Steel, can you make a defense roll at minus five, please? Oh, critical failure. Critical <sighs> failure. Um, so, with that fumble defense, so it's just, okay, an increase of uh, damage by three. Can you give me an armor roll, please? I sure can. I always forget what my armor is. It is a D10. Six. That's acceptable. Six. It is acceptable. Um, the Dragool kind of like, obviously you came in behind the thing uh, and it kind of wheels round. And again, your head's a bit off from, you know, <laughs> you, you were drugged and then you fell off a tower. Um, so it's not a good, I, uh, this is after falling off a cliff. So it's not been a good day. You're a bit shaky, and it wheels round with that um, uh, rusty axe that it has, and the axe kind of clunks into the side of your plate. You feel, you hear that like unpleasant scrape of metal on metal as the blade bites into the side of your plate, and you feel a sharp ah, scratching cut into your flesh as it does manage to penetrate and cut into the side of your body for four toughness, please. They're no joke, these Dragools. And there's 200 of them. I'm glad they're not going the 100 Dragool route. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have much chance. Yeah. Um, so that's the only one. The others are paying all the attention to the Templar now. Uh, so, Steo, it's your turn, and you have an advantage on this thing if you want to uh, strike true on it. Wish me luck, everybody. Um, it's a uh, plus two. It, it's Plus two, yeah, 15, so 16, plus two 17. You've got advantage. Or 18 is their actual number. Oh, fantastic. There we go. Uh, damage roll, please. So D10, that's the seven. Plus one is eight. And then the D4 for advantage. Plus two is 10 in total. 10 in total. Um, so that is reduced by that amount, which means, yeah. Um, 
you you know what we've had enough stabbing let's have a bit of battering um you manage to basically like as it's its axe is bitten into the side of your um well, your side um you manage to kind of drag it around uh, by twisting your body and it stumbles on the uh bone and you know rotting flesh it calls its legs uh and as it's staggering off guard you whip your spear around and just slam the the hilt the, the hilt the pommel of your spear into its face four five or six times in like a sharp report and it kind of reels backwards you know part of its face caved in in what would be again a mortal wound for a living warrior um it's fairly battered but it's still just about reeling and on its feet um Ganderold, uh, uh, oh, I've already said they've come to the roof. Uh, the Templar down below is still managing to hold uh, them off, but now has is surrounded by probably around 30 or 40 of them that are swarming towards him again. Uh, his holy aura is peeling them apart slowly, but not slowly enough. Um, rusty blades are reaching out and catching on his armor, uh, but he seems very determined. His eyes glance up for a moment in the roof, and his eyes almost seem to light up a second, and he, he shouts, Squire! Flee! Fast! <coughs> Revelia kind of like pauses for like one second with a look of kind of a torn consternation on her face and then nods in uh, obedience and flees around the side of the tower after the rest of you. What's going on with the Dragals that made it onto the roof before? They they are basically flopping off the roof to try and get the Templar. Okay. Um, whatever he is doing, uh, you know, is attracting the attention of a lot of them. So uh, we are back round to the beginning with a very pathetic sort of enemy. Um, but we'll 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 go the distance here. Ask Rai, I'm assuming you're gonna engage this sad little remaining Dragool and, and try and finish it off. Yep, I'll I'll do my best. Uh cool. Well you have advantage as well, so give a roll at plus two. Okay, I rolled an eight, which hits, and the damage is ten. Yeah. So, with the bow uh, or the sword? Sword. With the sword, right? Your sword does good damage. Um, it's a fancy sword. <laughs> fancy sword. Um, yeah, you basically... The thing is reeling and, and flailing with its axe to try and keep um, Steo and Aaron back at this stage. And you take advantage of that to just, like, duck around behind it. Um, you start swinging and you 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 clasp your other hand over to give a, a full two-handed strike to the thing. And the top of its head just shears off uh, and, you know, partly... Uh, dusty brain matter scatters along the the roof of the building and it collapses uh, like a corpse that's been in place for months or years uh, on the roof. You all have a clear run at the back of that wall now. You have waste. to, you can scramble down from this roof, which isn't, you don't have to roll to do that. Um, and then you've got the climb at the wall, obviously, but you're all free to do so now. I will head that way immediately as soon as, uh, this struggle seems to be dead. Absolutely. Um, so, uh, is anyone doing anything else as they're just moving to the ed the back of this roof and, and clambering down? I want to shout down to the Templar and say, like, Prius' light shines on you, brother. Your deeds will be remembered. Um, the you, the Templar definitely registers what you say, and he kind of opens his mouth to to like shout something back. And as he does so, a number of the dragools kind of latch onto him. He's still alive and kind of wrestling with them. And you you cool like distract him. Hear like a, the <laughs> creak and the crack of bone neck bone snapping as he kind of forces one awkwardly to a ninety degree angle, and he, you catch his eye for like just a moment and he just screams Prius at the top of his breath um, before another, he's still alive because the mass is kind of moving with him underneath and like bits of them are still coming off under the, the warmth of his holy aura um, but that's safe to say is the last time you see him fully uh, okay. so you are, uh, are we clambering off the edge of this roof? You don't have to roll to do that I don't think Oh yes. Uh, no, you can basically like hang off the edge and just drop. It's a bit of an awkward landing, but you can do it. Yeah. Um, 
Okay, and then are you just making your way through the tall dead trees and the, the slight unnatural undergrowth to the to this back wall? There are no dragouls between you and it. You can see a few of them scattered on the edge of your vision, but they're if they see you, they're kind of like only slowly turning to recognize you're there. I do appreciate that we're committed to this now, but do, is this wall the, leading to the opposite side of the valley than where our rope is? Yeah, it is, but you just you would have to scout round the wall. You you just move round the walls and then strike out yeah. to the west to do so. So you have to kind of scout round to the edge of the gate. But what it does crucially is break line of sight between you and the Dragouls. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, we're doing it. <laughs> There's no turning back now. So sure. Yeah. Um, well, unless uh, no one has any specific actions to do, you all just kind of like. Running as fast as you can towards the edge of the wall, I assume. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Ganderald and uh, Revelia are doing the same. Um, and you reach the wall, and basically, this is another climbing task, but this thing is like crumbles. There are big chunks of, of stone, there are vines wreathing all the way through it. It's a much easier climb. And what you have basically, you can hear some stumbling feet starting in the distance behind you and kind of moans and hisses. So they do know where you are and they're starting to come for you. Essentially, and I will give you the full clock on this, you have five turns before the Dragouls catch up and start to arrive. And each of you has to make two successful tests at Vigilant plus five to clamber over this. So it's not too hard, but let's do it one by one because that one turn by one, because that's fun, right? So, uh, first turn that you have with them coming towards you. Can everyone make a Vigilant Test plus five, please? Do I get any kind of a bonus? For yeah, my... yeah. Take another plus two. Yeah, yeah. We'll just say you generally get climbing things. So, Chris has one success. Elindra does not. Uh, no, sorry. I, I actually meant to interrupt there. Oh, okay, go. Because um, I cannot afford to lose a single hit point more. So, I am going to take this first turn to do a Medicus on myself. Uh, yeah, sh sure. I think it will take more than one turn to do Medicus on yourself. I also okay. think you've already done Medicus today. I think I also think you've done Medicus on yourself today. Okay, guess I'm going over the hill. There's an uh, elixir. Vigilant plus, what was it? Five. True, there is another corruption el healing elixir thing. I am not, I'm not conscious of this. <laughs> I've got one success. Okay. So did everyone but Alindra get one success there? I rolled a one. Okay. But yes. Uh, and with acrobatics? Yeah. Yes. I think Arindar literally scampers up <laughs> fucking hand over hand monkey style. Um, Arindar wants to get out of there, clearly. And you know what? Um, you did it because you were following... Oh, no, he's up at the top of the cliff. Never mind. Um, the mare cat. You left him at the top with the donkeys, right? Yes. Um or what's left of the donkeys. Um, <laughs> no, he will not eat the donkeys. Um, yeah, you scramble up, and now you are literally at the top. Um, kind of standing on. You can look over the the like valley ahead of you on this uh, eastern side. You can't see anything dangerous. Uh, you know, it's just more trees, more underbrush. Uh, so it looks like a safe exit from the compound, from where you're standing. Um Askarine Steo, you're halfway up. Elindra, you're still trying to get a good grip at the bottom. Um, Ganderald and, and Revelia are also halfway up. Turn two. Another roll from the three who uh, have yet to make the ascent, please. Oh, come on. That's a 20. Uh, can I XP that one? You can if you want. Yeah, I was going to say, though, also on, on future turns, after someone has been at the top of the wall for one turn, I'm happy for them to kind of try and give you a hand up. So it's, it's up to you whether you want to roll it. Um, yeah, I think I do. Okay. Um, Lots of XP burn this session. I love it. Yeah. Just making a note of that, and then we'll do the reroll. Oh, for goodness sake. Your dice are also ill, Stephen. They are. There we go. And I don't mean that in the sort of uh, 80s hip-hop sense. Ill. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, Sam, did you get a success there as well? Yep, I can't really fail with a... No, no, <laughs> it's true. Uh, so Steo and Ascaray are also at the top. So we are at uh, turn three with two successes needed before the Dragouls start coming in. Um, Aaron, Steo and Ascaray can each try and lend a hand to bring a Linja up, which will give you another plus, I'll say plus one for each. So Vigilant plus eight. That's a pass. You're halfway up. Let's go straight to turn round four. Another vigilant plus eight roll, please, as the three of them desperately try and heave you up. Yeah, that's a pass. There you go. Uh, you heave yourself up, and about maybe ten seconds later, as you're like still sort of looking around for a way to jump to the other side, the dragouls kind of impact the wall below you and start kind of scrabbling. A couple of them try and lift themselves up, but the vines give way under their kind of sharpened, uh, bone-like claws, and the four of you are free, or the six of you, I should say, with the NPCs, free to leap down to the other side of the wall and probably rather desperately make your way round to the uh, the rope that still dangles down the side of the valley. Is there any other thing we are we are thinking of doing? Freaking Medicus rules for anyone I can make them on. Well, not as, it, yeah. Are you fleeing or are you healing though? I think as soon as we get like about forty good feet of underbrush between us and the site of the, of this thing, I'm going to stop ask Ryan heal him because as far as I'm concerned, he is his bones aren't right. Sure. <laughs> Probably true. That boy's bones ain't right. <laughs> um, sure. Okay. Give us a give us a cunning roll for that then, please. It's got to be eleven, and tonight's dice are fine. He does it. Uh, this okay. is with a um, medi pack, so it will be. That's herbal. Um, the new one D eight, I think. Yeah, I think, it's D eight it? for you, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, I think so. That's two. There we go. A little bit of healing. A little bit of healing for the change there. If we're um if we're pausing for a moment mm -hmm. to sort of gather our breath. Um so uh Alindra's picked up recovery. Oh yeah, yeah. Which is a sort of slightly interesting, largely unexplained mystical power. <laughs> Well, it's like just, kind of like it is meant to be like kind of meditation and like yeah just, yeah yeah so she's gonna sort of sit and kind of close her eyes and make a resolute and roll get a, yeah resolute roll isn't it to heal yeah something d4 which succeeds d that's like succeed, succeeds and that'd be d4 toughness which is only one hey better than nothing though right yeah um so. absolutely uh and then i imagine the time comes to for everyone to clamber back to their feet as the noise of the dragouls maybe increases on the other side of the wall and uh, strike out for the rope up the side of the cliff. Um, you arrived there quite quickly. It didn't take you too long to move. You know, you came down the side of the valley near to the tower, so it only takes you maybe, you know, five minutes or so to, to make your way to the side of the cliff. The rope is still there. Uh, I'm not going to make you do more climbing rolls uh, for this. You can cautiously make your way back up because the side was, like, partly scree as well. Um, and with some close trees that you can almost balance on as you make your way up. It's definitely easier to climb up than it is to climb down. Um, and you can kind of scramble to the top. Uh, your mare cat and your donkeys are still there, sort of. Uh, the mare cat is kind of curled up and kind of opens its eyes sleepily and takes you in before kind of closing them again and resting its head. Um, the donkeys kind of watch you impassively, wondering why the fuss uh, as you make your way up. Uh, Ganderold is one of the last to clamber up and sort of heaves his side over the cliff and sort of rolls all the way away from it uh, and kind of looking up at the, the probably slightly darkening sky now. Uh, overhead, you're still in sort of late winter and the clouds are obscuring most of Prios's light. Uh, it says, I think we should just go to Carvasti now. Agreed. I want to look around for any sign of elves, Gandrold. I think I'm happy leaving this veil behind. Good. Uh, and I think we shall end the session there, folks. Um, which means next week... Oh, no, it doesn't. Um, <laughs> well, what we'll have to do... Uh, there's a possibility that Mike is coming back soon, folks. Uh, which I'm sure everyone is very happy about. Um, 
there's a possibility we'll switch to doing a bit of like a what Mike got up to for a session or two, depending on if now is when he's coming back on how we want to play it. Or we might jump straight into the actual Witch Hammer content of Carbosti. So we will just have to see um, what, what happens with negotiations and my brain. Uh, but either way, I'm afraid I know we've had a lot of time off recently. We will not be on next week because I have to go away for a work thing. And trust me, I'm way more annoyed about it than you are. So, uh, yes, we'll be back in two weeks' time. Hopefully. Unless something horrible goes wrong. Uh, yeah. Um, so, throw any comments and questions in the chat that you would like us to talk about, please. In the meantime, I'll do a bit of a blurb. But before that... Uh, we have so many people who've uh, followed us these past couple of days. I don't know what we did. Is it Vason starting? Is it Freely giving us some retweets? Who knows? Maybe it's some kind of crazy Twitch inflection point. Either way, thank you. Uh, and I will read out uh, those people. Johnny may have read some people are out already um, over on Vason, but I'll read out from the last while anyway. So you get two shout outs for the price of one. There you go. Uh, thank you to Crafty Sims, Jack, uh, Cheeky Lima, uh, Or Plaster, Hellstrom89, Gleawine, Rossignol500, uh, Ineptikron, which is an amazing name, um, Unclek1972, Merwin, and also, uh, speaking of Or Plaster or AW Plaster or Or Plaster, possibly, um, thank you also for the six month subscribe. Um, lovely to have someone follow you and then immediately subscribe to you. Clearly we tickled your fancy. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Um, right, uh, blurb, normal nonsense stuff. Links, we have links below. YouTube, Twitch, you watch this on one, please check out the other. Uh, we have social media links, Discord, Patreon, that all do what you might expect them to do. We run two games a week at the moment. Vason is on Mondays that Johnny runs. Simbroom is obviously tonight, Wednesdays. Um, we'll hopefully get a third game on the go soon. We've obviously had three games on the go various other points this year as well and we'd like to do another one but we're not sure when that'll happen just yet we also run one shots uh once a month where we visit lots of different systems of games the next one of those is this very saturday um this saturday at five o'clock p.m um bst we'll be playing cyborg uh which is the new morkborg spin-off that's uh kind of lovely uh sort of splatterpunk uh, near future cyberpunk take on the Mork Borg formula. I'm very much looking forward to running this. I will be joined for it by no less than two of the Simbroom folks. Uh, there is John here and there is Chris there. And they will both be taking part alongside Justin, Johnny, and Steve. Yes, Steve, our wonderful asset master, um, will be joining us. So that'll be a good one. Join us for that. It'll be hyper violent uh, and hyper critical of capitalism um so all the best things um so john start throwing them comments and questions in please so we had a few suggestions for what this mini arc should be called uh-huh not the witch hammer again very good witch hammer adjacent sure wizard screwdriver yes good the Witch Hammer, sure. Theurg Multitool. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Would it horrify everyone to know that both of these scenarios already have names? Yeah. Would you like to know them? I have used them as titles on YouTube. The the one, the first ruin is called Green as Copper. And the second one that we've just done is called A Blooming Veil. Um, which, if you're from the north of England... It does make it yeah. sound slightly Blooming different. Blooming Vale. Blooming Vale. <laughs> um, but there we that go. About, that about encompasses my thoughts on the matter. <laughs> there we go, yeah. <laughs> Interestingly enough, here's, here's an interesting thought for you all. If we do do, uh, at some point we will do um, Anton's Adventures, whether that be now or further along as a kind of flashback thing, um, that will be the first completely original content in this campaign that isn't pre-written and part of Throne of Thorns, full stop. There have been other bits I've heavily developed, like the very first, the prologue. And obviously there was Fetters of Stone, which was a spin-off that was all me. But it will be the first thing that's not in Throne of Thorns at all. 
So there we go. So if it's shit, cool. <laughs> um, I, don't I watch hope, any of my other stuff, I guess. I hope Anton jumps an actual shark. Jumps an actual <laughs> shark, yeah. Wonderful. Uh, more comments and questions and stuff. Agios Vidar, I thought the go-to move for heroes was to get the villain monologuing. I mean, they eventually went for that, so that was fine. After I complained. Um, to be fair, it was less my complaint and more the fact that two of them were horribly drugged. Um, it was so. it was mainly that. Yeah, Like, uh, we were right there, right? He was only yeah, using yeah. monologuing oh, to get yeah, the show yeah. open. The, the only offer he was about to give you was one you absolutely would never have accepted. So, yeah, yeah you, it was always going to end in a fight or, yeah, or him. I feel like the campaign would have taken a very different turn if we were just like, yeah, we'll join your army. Yeah, all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, just if you'd been like, can I interest you in timeshare? This tower is lovely in the summer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, slightly reminiscent of one of my favourite bits in our Troika one shot. Which I don't know if any... <laughs> uh, this next comment deserves to be on a motivational poster in every workplace. Uh, Steve, you don't have to be mindless or dead, but it helps. <laughs> yeah. True. Um, and we also have from when the Templar appeared. <laughs> and Tom, no, can't be. He hit one. Yeah, that would be amazing if that person bursting through the window had been Anton, and I'd been like, "And here's Mike," and he just pops in <laughs> and just bursts out and goes, "Ah!" and he's immediately just one shot. Wow, <laughs> uh, and, and did damage. Now, 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 when Anton does hit. He usually does crazy, ridiculous, out <laughs> like uh, outlandish criticals. So it does it's, happen. It's all or we nothing, forget the it? hunger wolf. Yeah, I forget the hunger wolf. Uh, there were also jokes about Anton rappelling down from a helicopter. <laughs> sure, which yeah, I yeah. quite appreciated. Hel Prios copter. Yes. Uh, Steve, do the characters regret leaving Thistlehold? Ganderold does. Ganderol definitely does, yeah. <laughs> no, Asquire regrets literally... ever going to Thistlehold. <laughs> yeah. just right now a we've got a life full of literal woods. loot, though, so it's not all bad. Yeah. We're nearly at the start of our adventure, so I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure everything's going to get real great once we get to Carvosti. I mean, let me tell you, I, read, I haven't read all of Witch Hammer yet, but I've, I've read lots of bits of it, and like, my first thought was, well, this is an escalation. So, um, <laughs> you know, good luck. That's all I'm saying. I just I, hope people are willing to trade gold urns for healing in Carvosti, because yeah, otherwise we're going to be in serious trouble. Uh, it's also worth saying that, but from looking, I don't know what our XP win from the session is, but for at least two of us, it two. probably wasn't actually worth us turning up Yeah. in, in terms absolutely. of the great XP economy. Definitely yeah. it's, XP it's two was. XP, but yeah, 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 yeah. In terms um, of enjoyment, obviously, we're glad we're here. Have we got anything more? No, I think uh, that so is everything. In that case, folks, thank you so much for watching, and we hope you enjoyed. Uh, check out all our stuff on YouTube if you want a bit more of us. Uh, and thank you to my wonderful players, as always. Like I say, we'll be off Simbroom next week because I have a work trip there. Um, but we will be back the week after that for more Simbroom. And, of course, we will be on this Monday with Vason. Uh, so go check that out if you want your... Uh, if you like your Victorian folk horror paranormal investigation, it's it's Victorian, much more polite Hellboy, basically, is what it is. So, yeah. Slash X-Files, I suppose. Um, yeah. Thanks, folks. Take care. Stay safe. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.